So now that we know a little bit more about what lies beneath the Earth in the form of hydrocarbons, let's take a closer look at the characteristics of crude oil. What is crude oil anyway? The best way to describe it is to start with what it is not and how it does not behave. Crude oil is not a single chemical compound. It's a mixture of different chemical compounds. The most important of its behavioral characteristics happens when it heats up. When the temperature of crude oil is raised to the point where the crude starts to boil and is held at that temperature, some of the crude oil will vaporize and some of it won't. Contrast this with water. If we heat water to 212 degrees and keep the heat on, what happens? The water starts to boil. If we keep the heat on, eventually all the water boils off. But if we stick a thermometer into the pot just before the last of the water boils away, we would see that the temperature of the water still registers at 212 degrees. This is because the chemical compound H2O boils at 212 degrees. At atmospheric pressure, water boils at a temperature no higher, no lower than 212 degrees. Unlike water, crude is not one single chemical compound, but thousands, even hundreds of thousands of different compounds. Some of these compounds are as simple as methane or CH4 in chemist's shorthand. Some are as complex as C35H50. The different chemical compounds found in crude oil are all combinations of hydrogen and carbon atoms, something we know as hydrocarbons. And each type of compound has its own boiling temperature. Let's visit our lab again. If we take our pot of crude oil and heat it to a temperature of 150 degrees, the crude oil will start to boil. If we set the flame under the pot to maintain a temperature of 150 degrees, the crude oil stops boiling after a while. But if we raise the flame and increase the temperature of the crude oil to 450 degrees, the crude oil starts to boil again. And then after a while, the boiling stops. So what exactly is happening here? In our first example, the compounds that individually boiled below 150 degrees vaporized. In our second example, the compounds that boiled at temperatures between 150 and 450 degrees also vaporized. Each type of crude oil has its own unique distillation curve. That is a plot of temperature on one scale and the cumulative percent evaporated on the other. A distillation curve helps characterize what kinds of hydrocarbons are present in that crude oil. And if there's one thing you want to remember about crude oil, this is it. To further specify the character of crude oil, refiners have found it useful to lump certain compounds into groups called fractions. Fractions, or cuts, are the generic names for all compounds that boil between two given temperatures, or cut points. What you see here is a distillation curve and its fractions. As we've discussed, Crude oil compositions vary widely. The light crudes tend to have more gasoline, naphtha, and kerosene. The heavy crudes tend to have more gas oil and residue. Generally, the more carbon atoms in a compound, the heavier or more dense the compound, and the higher the boiling temperature. Conversely, the lower the carbon count, the lighter the compound, and the lower the cut points. Gravities measure the weight of a compound another important crude oil characteristic. A chemist would use a measure called specific gravity, which relates everything to water. The specific gravity of any liquid is equal to the weight of some volume of that compound divided by the weight of the same volume of water, all at standard pressure and temperatures, something that looks like this. Of course, the chemist's approach must have been too simple for petroleum engineers because the popular measure of gravity in the oil industry is a diabolical measure called API gravity. API, of course, is the American Petroleum Institute, which devised this standard. The formula for API gravity is measured in degrees, but has nothing to do with temperature or angles. The API gravity formula looks like this. Degrees API equals 141.5 over the specific gravity minus 
No one seems to remember where the 141.5 and the 131.5 came from. But if you play with the formula, you'll find some interesting relationships. First, water has a specific gravity of 1 and an API gravity of 10 degrees. Second, the higher the API gravity, the lighter the compound. And third, the reverse is true for specific gravity. But what about the sulfur in crude oil, you must be asking yourself now. <laughs> One of the more annoying aspects nature has bestowed on crude oils is the different amount of sulfur content in the various types of crude oil. To make matters more complicated, sulfur found in crude isn't yellow bits of elemental sulfur floating around in the crude oil. The sulfur atom is always chemically attached to a hydrocarbon molecule so that it's not easily separated from it, unless, of course, it is burned when it turns into sulfur dioxide. I think we all recognize that smell, a distinct odor of rotten eggs, which is both smelly and environmentally objectionable. Crude oils of varying sulfur content are categorized as either sweet crudes or sour crudes and believe it or not, have more to do with taste than what you might think. In the early days of Pennsylvania crude oil production, petroleum was sought after to make kerosene, which was used as lamp oil for indoor lighting. When kerosene from some sources was burned, people noticed their silverware tarnished at a higher rate. Not so for kerosene from other batches. The sulfur, of course, was the culprit, forming silver sulfate, tarnish. As you might guess, someone, somewhere along the line, discovered that kerosene with a high sulfur content tasted sour, but kerosene with a low sulfur content tasted more sweet. Over time, at least enough time for the designation to become permanent, tasting became the generally accepted practice to determine good lamp oil. All those kerosene tasters are now up in the gourmet shop in the sky and we now measure sulfur content analytically. Sweet crudes typically have 0.5% sulfur content or less. Sour crudes have 1.5% or more. Now that you know a little more about the evolution of petroleum refining and how oil and gas are captured and why the characteristics of crude oil make it both complex and fascinating, we're ready to tackle the processes that refine it. Let's step inside the refinery now and take a closer look at distilling. I'll see you on the other side.